Welcome back to WWTA News. Thank you all for joining me once again. Once again, thank you for joining me. Can I get you to hit that like button? Because you joined me. Come on, hit that like button. Don't be afraid of it. All right, uh, we're not going to do news today. We're going to talk about uh, taxes. Um, and I think it's important we talk about this. I just got done doing taxes over the weekend um, or having my taxes done. Uh, the wife took care of that. Uh, but uh, getting that information was important. And I want to talk about the importance of taxes uh, in the United States, because in the United States, as of right now, they're treating crypto assets as commodities. And so you will be paying gains and losses. Well, you'll be paying for any gains um, and so on and so forth, because it's being carried as a commodity or an asset. All right, so let's talk about that. Why is this important that you do this? For? So a lot of us that got into the space, um, we've probably seen a lot of gains in value. Um, now, if, if, if any of you have been making, uh, let's say, exchanging one currency out for the next currency, then those have become uh, taxable events in a sense because it's selling a currency and then picking up a new one. So there is a gain or a loss at that transaction. All right. So let's see if we can simplify. Um, so you you bought a home um, and this is I know it sounds stupid because, yes, technically, when you buy a home, it's really not an asset to you. It's an asset to the lender because they're the one getting paid for it. Um, and, and, and as long as they're getting paid for it, it's an asset to them because it's providing income um, to you. It's just a liability because you owe a lender obviously uh the the value of that so you're in again servitude or cert you got to be a servant or slave yourself to pay that debt Woof! i know i know i know i have to remind y'all of this stuff when we talk about this so we don't lose sight of what's actually going on right because that's that's the facts all right so let's just treat it like it's a home right and they say okay well you bought a home and then you sell it and so when you sell it, there's an appreciation in the value of it. And so then you make more money off it. And then you have to pay taxes on that money that you made off of it, right? So that right there is no different than what they're saying these cryptocurrencies are. They're carrying them in the commodities like an asset. So if there's value made when you sell that um, quote unquote cryptocurrency, quote unquote asset commodity, then what they're saying is if there was a gain in value, they want to tax you for that. And that's that's what goes on. So how do we stay on top of this stuff? So we use an app similar to Coin Tracker, or we just use Coin Tracker. There's a few apps out there. I believe I talked about another one in a past video. Uh, so we'll use an app like that and we'll API our exchanges to the coin tracker so that when we make a transaction it'll take that transactions information back to the coin tracker uh, as information that we made in exchange so this is going to uh, complete a list of transactions for us that we can use in the tax season um, that we'll download and then you know or upload to a tax preparer so that that information will be there and even with coin tracker which is why i've been using this is my second year using them second or third i don't know i think a second um so what happens is yes you're going to pay right just all right so if you have so many transactions throughout the year there's payment plan where well, there's there's plans that you can pay for um that will based on how many transactions you have they'll tally up all that information for you and give you boom the information you need for filing the taxes all right so what does that mean you had all these transactions over the year, over the year, right? You made some exchanges. There was gains and losses throughout that whole process. But if you don't use CoinTrack or an app like that, then you have to actually run all that stuff down yourself. Who wants to do that? But you know, uh, an app like CoinTrack, they do all this stuff for you, and then you pay them, um, you know, fifty dollars, sixty dollars, a hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, depending on the amount of transactions. Okay. So the more transactions you do, the more you got to essentially pay because they've got to bring all that information into one easily, easy, readable thing, um, which they'll become files and you can generate them. And then it'll send those files to your email, in which case you can open up your email and print them out. And you also have that PDF file right there. So you have the the, the information you need. All right. That simplifies everything for your tax preparer, and then they can bring that information in. So, you you know, you made some gains for the year, all right? So, how does this work? So, 
let's say, for instance, you're working a job. I'm working a job, right? I work a job, you know, until I finally get myself in the position I want. Right now, I work a job. I'm a servant. I'm a slave. I'm a slave, okay? There it is. I'm a slave in the United States. <laughs> That's funny, right? No, it's not funny. Uh, but anyways, so I work a job, and I'm employed. I'm a servant. And uh, so I make X amount of dollars for the year. Well, while I was making X amount of dollars for the year, I was growing in value, and I had transactions which became um, taxable events. And so those taxable events bring me to a point where I have gains for the year. So those gains have to come into my tax information as income for the year. So any gains, and that's just those taxable transactions, not all, not, not less, and so let me help understand. As you're buying and holding, you're not doing taxable transactions once you exchange or sell because an exchange is no different than a sale a sale is no different than an exchange in the sense of you're selling off that currency whether you're getting money a fiat or you're getting another currency it's the same thing so those two events right become taxable and then there's other events that are taxable but we're not going to talk about that at this exact moment i really want to talk about um these sales for the gains all right so we're talking about gains and losses so okay now that i've worked the year i've made money for the year and i've had these transactions these taxable events as far as exchanges and sales of uh currencies that i've had um now that once it's tallied up is going to show gains and losses is going to show if there's any money that needs to be added on to the money i made working my job so let's say i worked my job let's say i made i don't know let's say twenty thirty thousand dollars right any just making up numbers let's go with it all right let's say you made twenty thirty thousand dollars for the year and let's say you had uh gains of ten fifteen thousand dollars for the year so let's say ten ten thousand dollars so you made just to make it simple let's say you made uh thirty thousand dollars for the year at your job and you had gains of ten thousand dollars that puts you at forty thousand dollars of income um for the year so that is why it's important that you use coin tracker to bring that information in because the government knows that you've got income and that's all they're trying to do is get that stuff documented and get you to pay taxes on your income so now instead of you being a thirty thousand dollar a year income you just made into the forty thousand and of course next year it could change next year it could become a taxable event of twenty thirty thousand dollars then you could be a sixty thousand dollar a year person but you only made you only make at your job thirty thousand but here with these assets or these commodities that they're saying that they are uh even though you know they're mostly cryptocurrencies that's income that you grew so i want you to s just understand this if you're working a job and you make 30000 uh, that's just a fictional number. Don't, it's not about, whatever you make at your job, okay? Whatever mo amount of money you make at your job, that's the money you make at your job. Anything that you have in gains is also income that goes on top of that for tax purposes. So the, the, the federal government doesn't care that you didn't get that 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 from your physical job. They don't care about that. That's its own thing. What they care about is the fact that they know you got that 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 and you didn't add it to your taxes. That's what that's all about. So don't get scared. It's nothing crazy. Um, it's not the end of the world because when you're making money, you're paying taxes. And let me help you understand that, too. Let me simplify that. As a servant, you go to your employer, you work, you work uh, so many days out of the week and you get a paycheck either weekly, biweekly or monthly, whatever the case may be. You get taxed. OK, you get taxed federal. You get taxed state. You get Medicare, whatever else comes out of your taxes. All this stuff comes out of, of your, your paycheck and taxes and everything else. Right. And then at the end of the year, if you didn't pay enough, you pay more taxes. Right. And this depends on if you carry dependents, yada, yada, da, head of household, all this other stuff. All that stuff depends on what you're putting out th throughout the year. So you're responsible to keep track of this stuff because you as a servant are no different essentially than an employer because you're under the same tax premise as a business. So you're operating like a business. And so you've got to, you know, handle your tax liabilities the same way. And, and so let me. Oh, my God. I am not a tax professional or any of that stuff. I'm talking 
talking about what I personally had to go through. And this is my experience. If you really want to know all the details of this stuff, you need to go find somebody that does taxes uh, professionally. Not somebody that can do your taxes because anybody can do taxes, you know. But if you want to get actual, factual, professional information, here's a disclaimer. You need to go talk to a professional. I'm only speaking on stuff that uh, uh, that I've come across and that I'm starting to understand. Again, I am not a professional by any means. And you need to investigate this stuff on your own because I'm just talking about it and shit and putting some light on it. Because, yes, I had to file taxes. And, yes, I had to report those things because, yes, they their income. That's it's operating like income. So that's what I went through. And I'm sharing my experience with you so that you can, you know, uh, uh, you know, approach these things yourself and, and understand. Because, I, you know, I would hate, you know, to be in, in, in the midst of growing income and I feel like, you know, nobody alerted me. Well, I'm sure the federal government's done some alerting to this stuff and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, maybe you didn't get alerted to these things and maybe you need to be alerted. Like, hey, look, go ask some questions. If you have cryptocurrency over the year of 2021. And you don't understand anything about the, the cryptocurrency and taxes, you need to go ask a tax professional. I don't care if it's freaking H&R Block or somebody from Tax Act or if you got somebody, that you know, that, that professionally does taxes. You need to go talk to them. OK, and ask them some questions because this is all this stuff. Me, I've been investigating. I'm like, I know I got to pay taxes. I made money in a sense. Right. So I know they coming after me for taxes. That's just the obvious common sense. Right. That's important. You need to ask those questions. You need to go do that stuff. I mean, yes, you might have already filed taxes. So go ask those questions because you might need to do an amendment for this. You, you know, I would hate for the IRS to come back around on me and say, oh, you should have known better. We're going to now um, hit you for X, Y, Z and you owe us, I don't know, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars and how you going to pay it. And then they make you do a payment plan or whatever or they lock up your assets, freeze your accounts until they get their money. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. All I know is when you go to work, all right, you make money. And when you make money as a U.S. citizen, as a servant, as, as an employee, you pay taxes back out to what? The government. Why? Because the government is dealing in these bonds and they got to keep track of this stuff because we're essentially as employees, as servants to the United States. That's right. We have to pay our part as well, just like you hear them talking. Oh, big business needs to, p p to pay their part. Yeah, everybody operating as the, in the United States as as a uh, legal person or as a natural person, you're operating and doing business with the United States. You've got to pay taxes and you've got to, you know, all that stuff. And again, I am by no means a professional in any of this stuff. This is the stuff I'm learning as I read. You know, if I'm found to be wrong on something, it's possible I'm learning this stuff as you all should be learning this stuff. There's a comment box below where you can say, ah, no, that's not actual factual. You might want to read this. And then I can say, oh, there's something I haven't read before. Let me go read that and look at that. And then I can bring stuff and say, oh, well, let me share this because this is what I read. And this is what, you know, that's why I put the stuff on the screen for you to see. Uh, you're probably not looking at anything right now. This is just me sharing, you know, my thoughts and ideas and, and telling about an experience experience that I had it's really just me telling my tax experience so at this point in time yes I my taxes are filed and yes I had to report uh, my uh, uh, crypto uh, my crypto uh, uh, transactions and in those transactions uh, coin tracker has recorded that I made X amount worth of gains and then that had to be then brought out and added to my taxes, which states that on top of what I make at my job, I made this much money as well, which obviously changes the tax bracket that I'm in, which actually brought my taxes up. So whereas my job would have normally paid, the I would have paid out through my job, my normal amount of taxes for the year, I was found that no, I didn't because I made more money through these gains than I did at my job, which means I had to pay taxes. Yes, that happens. So what what, do we, what can we do? Well, one of the things that I'm looking at doing is I'm looking at either setting up a, an account where I put out every week from my paycheck uh, or biweekly or monthly, whatever your paycheck is. This is what I'm doing. Kicking out maybe twenty five, thirty dollars extra that I'll be setting aside throughout the course of the year in preparation for taxes. OK, 
And I know that sounds kind of crazy being in the crypto space, but it's like when you bring money into crypto, you still got to bring it back out and create a taxable event um, for uh, uh, taxes. Right. <laughs> you got to create a taxable event to pay taxes. Right? That's what it, it really boils down to, because you can go right back into your cryptos. You can sell some off and you can bring out the money you need to pay off your taxes. That's technically an easy thing. You know, I, I'm not a professional again, but, you know, you just think about some of the things you can do. But then again, you've created a taxable event. So you got to be prepared and understand that, OK, that's going to show up next year. Blah, 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 taxable event that's got to be recorded. Now, with that being said, you got other options. You can say, OK, well, let me not do as many taxable transactions this year uh, as I did last year. Right. So let's say uh, this year, I'm not going to do that many exchanges from one currency to the next this year. I'm not going to sell off that much currency. You see what I'm saying? This year, I'll try to keep it down to two, two, two to three transactions for the year. Right. As far as selling off. And maybe I just try to do no exchanges from one currency to the next. Okay. Cause right now in the United States, we don't have the actual, um, legislation and 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 regulation for these transactions right now uh, you you know this is why i share inf other information like what's going on in el salvador what's going on in honduras and other countries that are getting involved they're they're using cryptocurrency as legal tender creating this, creating the laws to make it legal tender so that you don't have the capital gains tax now that makes more sense um once you do that because it's currency if you're going to be spending this currency you don't want to have a taxable gains event every time you do a transaction can you imagine going to the store and you pay in cryptocurrency and then it becomes a taxable event and now you have a gains, a possible gains tax you're going to have to pay at the end of the year? How many times are you going to go to the store and spend that currency? Do you see what I'm saying? So until the United States deals with that, it's not like in the United States you really want to be spending that cryptocurrency because it's taxable events. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I don't do taxes. I'm not a tax professional. I am none of that stuff. This is the disclaimer one more time. You've heard me say this numerous times in this video by now. So I'm sharing my thoughts and my ideas uh, as I go through these experiences and dealing with this stuff. Now, in other countries like El Salvador and uh, Honduras, as, as these things become legal tender, they don't have to worry about that. They're just spending it as the currency that it is. And it's just transactions. I don't know what other currencies they have there that they do that with. I just know of Bitcoin right now. Disclaimer, I know that Bitcoin right now is uh, legal tender. Uh, so, you know, you have that thing, too. You can probably just convert into uh Bitcoin, if you know, because as right now we know that's legal tender, and then you know you'd be using it in another country that accepts that for legal tender versus the United States. So even still, that means what? While you're in the United States, you want to be converting and not spending. You want to be converting and not, and that's just my thoughts on it. You can do what you want to do, but just so you know, I had to do taxes. I had to report that stuff. It changed my tax bracket. I had to pay taxes on it. And nine times out of 10, that's what all United States citizens are going to have to do. So if nobody told you, you need to do your taxes on that stuff and you need to report it. You need Coin Tracker or any app that operates the same way. You need to API your exchanges to it. You need to get these transactions documented. If you've been doing DeFi through a wallet, you need to have that wallet attached to your Coin Tracker so that those transactions are recorded because they're they're definitely going to be coming after their taxes. Okay, it's income in the United States right now, and that's how they're carrying it. Not not this not, has nothing to do with me. That's what the United States is doing. They're carrying cryptos as commodities. That's it. I wanted to share that. If you got any questions, I mean, you can post them. But again, I'm not a tax, tax professional and I'm not a financial advisor. I would advise you go talk to a professional. I would advise you go to uh, 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 find a financial advisor and get their thoughts and opinions because I'm just sharing what I'm going through. All right. So, look, this was a long winded video, but I had to let you all know disclaimers are out. That's going down. Don't find yourself in a hole. If you like the video, hit that like button. If you know anybody involved in this stuff and you think they need to know that it's important that they go talk to a professional, share this video to them. I'm not going to disclose my, my financial information. I'm just going to let you know that, yes, I had to file that stuff for taxes. And, yes, it put me in a different tax bracket. And, yes, I had to pay taxes. And it is what it is. You know, we got into this space. We're growing money. That's what's going to happen. You go to work. 
you make money, you're growing money, quote unquote. <laughs> We're not going to have that conversation. Look, I'm going to end the video right there. i catch you all in the next one.